Hey, party people. People who love to party. It's me, Mr. Beal, here to talk to you today about solving absolute value inequalities with a two-dimensional graph, which sounds like something that probably you don't even want to do. But when I show it to you, you'll see that it's a little bit easier sometimes than solving it without the two-dimensional graph. In other words, just algebraically. So we're going to start here, back at equality. That's an equal sign. We're going to be dealing with inequalities today. First off, can we solve this algebraically? Yes, we can. We just got to split it. Bam. X minus 3 is equal to 5. X minus 3 is equal to negative 5. And then do the work for both pieces. Plus 3 plus 3. Plus 3 plus 3. X is equal to 8. X is equal to negative 2. Bam. Those are our answers. If we were to graph this, what would that look like? Well, this first part. Uh, f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. That's go forward 3. Bam, put a dot down. Boop, boop. Up one over 1 in both directions because there's no other number on the outside and the front. And then the other part is g of x is equal to 5, which we'll use a different color for. We're going to go to 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the y-axis and then go against that. So if you'll allow me to make these straight lines, it's pretty easy to see that we're touching at negative 2 and positive 8. Now, how the heck does this help us when we're trying to solve inequalities? Well, we've been over inequalities. We went over them the other day. And that was strictly algebraically solving them and then graphing them in the two-dimensional space. The cool thing about this is we're still using the same thing, only this is a less than or equal to. We're going to be working with more than or equal to with the same thing. So this graph applies. And what we're asking is, where is x minus 3, the absolute value of that, less than 5? Well, that's the same as asking, where is this v under the straight line. And that's right here. See this? There's the V. There's the V. All this stuff is under that straight line. From here to here is under there. Now check this out. That would mean if I just drew it just with the x-axis. So the only thing that's going on really is the x-axis. It's right on there. We have our 0 back here. We would have negative 2. 2, 4, 6, 8. We have 8 this way. We'd have solid dots because we're touching. And if you look at this graph, we are in between. So we'd do this. Ta-da. Graphed immediately. Which, when I look at this, I can see that x is greater than or equal to negative 2. And x is less than or equal to 8. It's going that way from 8. It's going that way from negative 2. Done. You've solved it. No algebra necessary. That's what it looks like when it's less than. Creepy, right? You guys are probably about to freak out. We can also do it the other way, where it says the more than part. So this is, where is my V bigger than, more than, that line at 5? Well, here's the bigger than parts. Look at them go up. And where is that with our lines? That's right here. Oh, yeah, all this stuff. So if I make that into a two-dimensional graph, the two-dimensional graph stuff I'm graphing is really just the pink things. Got my 0, negative 2, 2, 4, 6, 8. Solid dots, solid dots, and the pink is going that way. And this way. X is greater than... Well, I guess I got to do the 8 since I did greater than. Greater than or equal to 8. And x is less than or equal to negative 2. This would be an or. This was an and. That and up there doesn't make any sense. Whoa. There we go. Move that up a little bit just so that you can see it. And there you have it, guys. That's, that's the deal. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mr. Beal, that was crazy. Um, my brain has been warped by your evil, evil words. Okay, I'm going to show it to you again, but just so that you know, just in case this just isn't your thing, even though it's super quick and I didn't have to do a lot of math, I just had to visually interpret the picture that I saw. 
you could always split this up and solve it out. X minus three is less than or equal to five. X minus three is greater than or equal to negative five. Plus three plus three, plus three plus three. X is less than or equal to eight, just like I said. And X is greater than or equal to negative two. Also, like I said. All right, let's try it again, just to make sure that you don't have a complete and utter meltdown. And the way we're gonna try it this time is we're gonna make these uh, no solutions things make sense because the other time we practiced this and we knew, hey, that doesn't work. So if I do it in the solve method, I would get rid of the stuff on my outside. I've got X plus one is equal to negative five and uh, bam, no solution. Mr. Beer, why? Because we can't have an absolute value equal a negative number. It's never gonna happen. Graphically, this makes so much sense. It's so easy to see. I go backwards one, up three. I'm going up one and over one in both directions. Remember, not quite a slope. Because it's got two different slopes going either way. There we go. And then we're gonna graph that g of x, negative two and the sadness occurs. Ding, ultimate sadness. Rawr. All right, so what is this sadness about really? Well, the sadness is about the fact that uh, these guys don't touch at all. But we're not really worried about the touch. Well, we kind of are. We'd like to know where they touch. What we're worried about is like, where this thing is, whether it's above or below, which part of it is above and which part of it is below. And if we look at the below part, the less than, that's all this stuff right here. Our function isn't even there. So just like this says, no solution or undefined. It's not, we don't even have a definition for that. If we go to the pink one though, where along this x-axis do we have this v? Considering the v is going to go on forever in both directions, any number we plug in from up here is gonna work. So this is all real numbers. Every single thing works. If we're saying that it's greater than negative two, it has to be. The other way to write that is all real numbers. Mathematicians don't like that. Neither do I. Technically, mathematician, bachelor's degree, math. Uh -huh. All right, your job, before you're completely left on your own, is to try to graph these two. If you're having little tiny flutter panic attacks, don't worry about it, because you've graphed these things before. You've definitely tried this before. Graph that part, then that part. And then we're trying to find the piece that is under them. Graph this part, then this part. This is another under. Whoops, I probably should have made that over. Guys, I'm gonna pause it for you so that you have some time to try. Try. All right, we're back. Let's see how you did. Bam. Zoom out just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. So what's going on here, guys, is you want the under part. Here is the under that line. So that means from here to here, your V function is under the line. Well, where is that on the X axis? That's from negative nine, greater than negative nine to less than five, going that way. Same thing going on here, we want the under part. That's this guy right yonder. And that's from X is greater than or equal to negative one and X is less than or equal to seven. Because you're just gonna give this a shot. If this seems too weird for you, let's just give the next four problems a shot on your own and do the best you can. Because if you can do this algebraically, you win no matter what. This is just a pictorial representation. The algebra part, that's the one where no matter what, you gotta be able to do that. And you've already done that, all right? So, as always, stay safe out there. Roll crazy.